Hi class, so this is a continuation of your upper extremity bones. Make sure you have your master list and worksheet in front of you as we go through these bones. So we already finished the humerus. What was this part right here? The medial epicondyle. Here's the lateral epicondyle. Here are your condyles, right? What's a condyle? Make sure you know what a condyle is. Here you have your trochlea and your capitulum. This fossa, what was this fossa called right above trochlea? The coronoid fossa. So this is going to be important because we're going to learn some words on um, this ulna that has to do with the trochlea and has to do with the coronoid fossa. So we're going to look at that shortly. But when we look at these two bones in the forearm, we have the radius and the ulna in the anatomical position. Put yourself in the anatomical position. The radius is always on the thumb side. Always on the thumb side. The radius is your lateral bone of the forearm. The ulna is the medial bone of the forearm. Here is how the two bones articulate with each other. This is the ulna. This is the radius. Here's the proximal end, the distal ends. These two bones are going to be articulating up here. This is the proximal articulation point and down here. So we need to look at that further, but we're going to be starting with this bone first, the ulna. So let's go to our ulna. So here we have the ulna articulating with our radius. This is in the anterior view. So this is the anterior view of both of these bones. Now you can't quite see it here, but there's going to be something called a trochlear notch right here. So if you look at your worksheets, I'm sure you're going to see it. But look at your master list and Let's start to see what's on your master list. The first word is the alecranon, the large proximal end that makes the pointy bump on the posterior part of your elbow. What that means is when you put your elbow on a desk, you bend your, your elbow joint, that pointy bump is your alecranon. Here's showing you kind of the backside right here. This is the olecranon back in through here. I'll show you a different view of it shortly too. But this is the back pointy part of your elbow, the olecranon, the trochlear notch. So we can see the trochlear notch up front right here, but I'm going to show it to you on this bone that rotates. Here you can kind of see the trochlear notch better on a side view. Let's have it come around a little bit more. This is the trochlear notch. It's a little cup. The trochlear notch is rotating around what? Trochlea. It is going to be rotating. It's going to be grabbing this trochlea and rotating around it. So let's get back to this guy. So trochlear notch. And what's next? The coronoid process. So here's the trochlear notch, and then you're going to have this lip down here. This is the coronoid process right here. You can kind of see it right here too. It's harder to see straight on. This is the coronoid process. This whole thing is the olecranon. This, this part of the olecranon is going to be fitting in the olecranon fossa. Remember your olecranon fossa of the humerus? That's going to be going in 
the lecranon fossa, this coronoid process is going to be going in the coronoid fossa of the humerus. There's one other structure you need to see right here. This is going to be the radial notch, the radial notch of the ulna. The radial notch is where the head of the radius is going to be articulating with the ulna up in here. Real, real important, that radial notch. So the radial notch of the ulna is where the head, we'll learn this bone shortly, the head of the radius is articulating with the ulna. Um, distally, let's see me get in a better view. Well, we'll start here. Distally, we are going to have the head of the ulna, which is tiny down here, and the styloid process, this little pointy thing down here. Very tiny styloid process. Let me see if we get this. Let me get it in the anterior position here. Oop, can't even see it there. Here is the head of the ulna right here. The styloid process, so tiny. Let's see if we can see it. There it is. You can see the styloid process a little bit better in this view. Styloid process of the ulna, the head of the ulna. Now the head of the ulna is going to be articulating with the radius down here. There's going to be an ulnar notch of the radius that is articulating with the head of the ulna. You need to figure that out. Up here we're going to have a radial notch of the ulna that articulates with what? It's called the radial notch. It's articulating with the head of the radius. So I think that's about it for um, the ulna. Real easy to see on a real bone, this radial notch. It's a smooth, articular surface. This is going to be covered with hyaline cartilage, articular cartilage, right there. Right there. Now, let's go to the radius. So, we said the radius is the lateral bone of the forearm. This is an anterior view also. How do I know it's anterior? <laughs> Once you've seen a radius, the distal end of the radius, this is always smooth on the anterior surface. Smooth anterior surface, the um, dorsal or, or posterior side of the radius is always roughened and irregular. So this is the anterior view, posterior view. Here is showing you an anterior view of the radius here. What do you need to know on your master list? The head. The head of the radius is this rounded part up here. This is the head of the radius. This is covered with articular cartilage. The head of the radius articulates with the ulna where? At the radial notch of the ulna. It's actually going to be twirling. It can kind of twirl in that uh, radial notch of the ulna. So the head of the radius, the radial tuberosity, it's just inferior to the head. It's this bump right here, radial tuberosity. You can see it here too. And then the other two landmarks you need to know, the ulnar notch is in the distal end. I could not find a real bone that showed it 
The ulnar notch is going to be right in here. The ulnar notch is where the head of the ulnar ulna is going to be articulating with the radius. So the ulnar notch of the radius. And then the styloid process. Here's the styloid process of the radius. Much bigger than the styloid process of the ulna. So I wanted to come back to show you this elbow joint. Here you have trochlea. What's this fossa right above trochlea? Coronoid fossa. Here's capitulum. So here's trochlea. Here is the coronoid process of the ulna, this little point right here. You cannot see the trochlear notch, right? You can't see the trochlear notch, but the trochlear notch is going to be going riding over trochlea when you bend your elbow. So here is an x-ray of your arm in the extended position. So here is, what's this? Medial epicondyle. What is this? Coronoid fossa. Here is what condyle? Trochlea. Which one's this? Capitulum. Here is the head of the radius. Here is the radial tuberosity. Here is going to be your radial notch, which is going to be articulating with the head of the radius. Here they're showing you the radial notch of the ulna right here. Here is your elbow bent. Here's the humerus. Here you can see the trochlear notch of the ulna going around trochlea of the humerus. When you completely bend your elbow, this coronoid process is going to go in that coronoid fossa. When your elbow is completely straightened, this olecranon is going to be going into that big olecranon fossa in the backside of the humerus. So easy to see those. So now we're going to go down into the carpal bones. Carpal bones. What does carpal mean? Wrist. So we have eight carpal bones. Um, you, for my class, only need to know the ones that are clinically important. So you only need to know three of them. <laughs> two of the carpal bones are going to be in the first row. There's two rows of carpal bones, the, the second row and the first row. The first row is next to our, our distal radius here. So the bones you need to know in this first row is number two. This is scaphoid. Scaphoid, the large, he's the largest um, carpal bone. And next to scaphoid is lunate. Scaphoid and lunate. Why are they important? Because the wrist joint, and you'll be learning about joints shortly, the wrist joint is formed from the distal end of the radius and the scaphoid and lunate bones. That's it. There is no articulation of the ulna with any carpal bone. No direct articulation with any carpal bone by the ulna. Only the radius. They are going to be calling this the radiocarpal joint. You'll learn that shortly. Radio for the radius, carpal because of the carpal bones. So, scaphoid, lunate. Scaphoid, lunate. Scaphoid, the biggest one, it has 
the most surface area contact with the distal end of the radius, and then the lunate. The next bone is carpal bone you need to know is going to be a second row carpal bone. This bone, they're showing you number six here, is called trapezium. Now, if you're looking at your worksheet, these words are all in front of you so you can see it. Trapezium. This is your thumb, right? Remember, the, here's your styloid process of the radius. The, the, the radius is on the thumb side. So trapezium, this is your thumb. We are going to be learning your thumb swings from the trapezium. The thumb is your only digit, your only finger that is, has the ability to have opposition. What does that mean? It's an opposable thumb. You can cross your thumb over and touch your pinky, right? That's not going to happen with any other finger. Only the thumb can cross over like that. Why? Because of this bone, the trapezium. So always remember the thumb swings from the trapezium. So those are going to be the three carpal bones my students must know. Scaphoid, the biggest one, and lunate, along with the distal radius form the wrist joint and then the trapezium is articulating with the metacarpal we'll talk about our metacarpals shortly metacarpal number one this is the thumb the thumb swings from the trapezium those are your clinically important carpal bones now we're going to go into your metacarpals metacarpals meta means after so metacarpal would be, mean what? After your carpal bones. So these are the bones in your hand. So if you make a fist, these are going to be your knuckles up here. These are your knuckles up in here. So go ahead and make a fist. <laughs> these are your knuckles up in here. So we are going to have five metacarpals. Number one, we name we number them one through five. One is always the thumb. So this would be metacarpal number one, two, three, four, five. Your pinky, your little finger, is always number five. Thumb is always number one. Easy. Then we come to your fingers, your phalanges. Now we have this is this is this is number two right this is number one two three four five these are going to be your phalanges two three four five thumb is number one this is proximal phalange number one proximal phalange number two proximal phalange three four and five easy proximal the the one that's closest in then we have our middle phalanges middle phalange two middle phalange three middle phalange number four middle phalange number five the thumb does not have a middle phalange then we come to our distal phalanges distal phalange one distal two three, four, and five. Real easy. When you get to your feet, it's going to be exactly the same. Instead of metacarpals, it will be metatarsals. The big toe will be number one. So once you have the hand down, the foot's going to be real easy. So here's an x-ray of your wrist. Here is your distal radius. Here is your ulna. Here's the styloid process of the ulna, styloid process of the radius. Here you can easily see the scaphoid. 
the lunate have direct contact with the distal end of the radius. Look at this big space here. No direct contact. The carpels have no direct contact with the ulna. No direct contact with the ulna. Scaphoid. Lunate. Here is your trapezium. Trapezium. Metacarpal 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then your phalanges. Proximal, distal, proximal, middle, distal. Make sure you know how to number them. So, if you fall down, say you are skateboarding and you you fall down, you're going to out you're going to stretch out your hand to catch yourself, right? So, you're going to bend your wrist and the pressure when you fall down is going to be on the distal end of the radius and these two bones. What's this big bone here? The biggest one right here? Scaphoid and next to it, lunate. Look, when your wrist is bent, there is no direct contact with any carpal bone with that ulna. Here's and here's your trapezium right here. So what does that mean? It means the most commonly fractured carpal bone is going to be your scaphoid. When you fall down, all the pressure is going to be within here. So you're either going to get a fracture of the radius or the scaphoid. Sometimes the lunate, but mostly it's going to be scaphoid and the distal end of the radius. You fall down a scaphoid fracture, this is what it looks like. Here's a normal scaphoid, no fracture. Here is the fracture here. These have to be treated aggressively because the scaphoid is the only bone, in, the carpal bone, that gets its blood supply from the backside. The only way this bone is going to get a blood supply is from this backside. So if you have a fracture here and there's no union between the two bones anymore because now you've got a fracture, this part of the bone will not get blood and it will die. This is called a vascular necrosis. A vascular necrosis. So I wanted to show you um, show you this. This I I called it a vascular necrosis. I wanted to write it down for you. A vascular without blood necrosis death. This is necrosis means death death without a blood supply. So this has got to be treated aggressively. Lots of lawsuits over an unhealed scaphoid fracture. If you want to Google it, you'll see it. So this is what they're going to do. They're going to put this pin, this screw in here to make sure they get these two bones joined together so it can heal and not have a vascular necrosis of this part of the scaphoid. This down here is not a fracture. This is actually a 15 year old. This is his growth plate that you're seeing down here. So this is just the growth plate right there. And here is our, our distal radius right here. <laughs> what do you see here? Here is the styloid process. Something is not quite right here. This is a fracture of the distal end of the radius. Here's the scaphoid and the lunate. This is commonly fractured too. This has got to be put together too to, to heal properly. So here they do a mega pinning right here to get it all back together. So I think that's it for the upper extremity. Upper extremity is not that hard. A lot of terms, but um, it's really not that hard. Oh, look right here. 
oh my gosh, what's here? I could see something right here. What's this on the, the distal end of the, the radius? This is going to be the ulnar notch of the distal radius where it articulates with the head of the ulna right here. Pretty cool. I just saw that. Anyway, so that's it. So hopefully you have all the upper extremity bones down. Now you just need to do the lower extremity and you'll be done with the skeletal system.